Let's get ready to rumble! And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life. You are Ali. Ali. Hello guys, welcome. We are live on air. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for your support. Please invite our friends. Let everybody know that we are live. Let me say hi to our friends in the live chat. Hello, K Soko Films. How are you, dear sister? Tati, Avanus, Marion, Grand Bruheim, Richard, Paulus, Hannah, Kaula, A Simple Patriot, Morales, Michael, Samir Khan, Michiel van der Vlies, uh, Karin, Karin, Joshua Seng. There are actually many of you. Devil Chaser, Phyllis, Oli Tata, Romeo, Demilio Sanchez, Christopher, Sunil Sunni, Joe Bill, Sandra, Les Savage, Kevin John Allen. Welcome, everybody. Sorry if I did not mention your name. There are a lot of you. Please invite. Let everybody know that we are live on air. We are live on air. Let us start our live show. Welcome everybody. Before we start, please pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so our live stream and our audience and subscribers can be blessed by our Holy Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Dear Lord, bless, bless our beloved audience and subscribers. Lord, thank you for your grace. Jesus is risen and risen is he indeed. And nobody can do anything about it because that's the historical fact. al Messiah qam, haqqan qam. That's what we say in the Arabic as Arabic speaking Christian. Jesus is risen. Truly is risen. Thank you for your ultimate gift, Lord. Thank you for your grace that saved us from death. And thank you for my lovely audience and subscribers who are always supporting us day in, day out for many months now. Please bless them and bless their loved ones and families. Please, God, keep all of us healthy and safe, especially from the spread of this Qur'ana virus. The coronavirus. Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct our words, thoughts, and actions. Give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give in to any makr, any deception, taqiyya, lies, or any doubt, Lord. Please help us honor you in all our ways. Lord, I pray to you and ask you to shine your holy light on all of us including the Muslims who might be in need and are seeking for the truth. Please, Lord, open their eyes so also they can be saved. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today so I can speak the truth without any error or any shame. Lord, give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done in Jesus' name. We pray. 
Amen. Amen. Glory to His name. The name above all names. Thank you guys. Welcome. God bless you. On this live show, we will have the opportunity today to investigate who actually appeared to Muhammad in that cave. Hira, Hira, Hira. Was it an angel or a demon who was choking Muhammad like a crepe? Muhammad was being squeezed as if that creature wanted to get juice out of him. He was squeezing him like a grape. <laughs> over and over let us do some investigation invite guys let us start i want to ask you to subscribe smash that like button and if you want to become a patron on our patreon account if you want to support our full-time ministry go ahead thank you for your support thank you for everything because without you we cannot do this guys let us start. Jibril, an angel or a demon? How many people in the live chat think actually that Jibril, the Islamic Jibril, is an angel? And how many people in the live chat actually believe that Jibril is a demon? Give me a one if you think it's an angel. Give me a two if you think it's a demon. Let us see what the majority vote is. Michel van der Vlees says two. Good day says two. A simple patriot, two. Pro life says demon, two, two, demon, demon. Marion saying angel? No way, Marion. I don't believe you. You're, you're joking, right? <laughs> obviously a two. Someone is saying obviously a two. Christopher is saying demon for sure. Sonil Sonil says an angel but just a fallen one that's a good one actually a very good point <laughs> a very good point someone's saying satan wow shaitan you need to say hey my friend how are you need this he's saying shaitan i meant demon <laughs> okay marianne we'll forgive you we will not force jizya on you sister don't worry i'm not going to force jizya and uh, ask you mafia protection money we're not muslims right <laughs> all right guys all right all right well it seems that many people here don't believe what the muslims claim that a so-called angel appeared to muhammad who started to squeeze him like a grip like a grape as if this creature was you know thirsty he wanted to drink something that would come out of this prophet of islam <sighs> do we have a muslims i hope we have muslims because we have at least one dislike we have a triggered muslim and i think muslims don't like this topic guys because their imams don't dare to talk about this topic. How many videos have you seen of imams, of ustaz or a sheikh on YouTube talking about this very topic? They don't like to talk about this topic, guys. They don't like to bring it up. Really? Yeah, a juicy prophet, Natalie is saying. Juicy prophet, yeah, you know, squeeze him like, you know, as if the juice will pop out of him, man. <laughs> Guys, before we start to spank Muhammad, let me play for you a small clip and we will go from there, okay? Let me play a small clip that is very interesting, that has to do everything with this very topic. If it is an angel or a demon who squeezed Muhammad, let us do this, guys. Put on your headsets and focus to what is being said in the video. It's a very small clip, but we will continue from there. Let's ask Janab al Qumus about Muhammad. Why, when he came to Al Ghar, لم يعرف كما رأينا في القصة لم يعرف من الذي قابله. هل هو جني شيطان؟ 
هل هو ملاك وذهب يرتعد لماذا لم يعرف محمد صاحبه مع احترامي لرأي حضرتك في السؤال نعم. لكن محمد لم يظن قط ولم يفكر قط أنه ملاك نعم. هكذا تقول السيرة نعم. كان نعم. يشك دائما أنه جن وأنه واو. تابع ولا و... وأنه مسة وصار له جنن تقول كتب سير أنه... هكذا قالت نعم. ولا تقول إطلاقا كتب السير أنه ظن أنه ملك نعم. Did you catch it guys? Nowhere Nowhere can we find that it was an angel Right? And you'll see what Muhammad himself believed <تصفيق> كان لبا لأن ظهور الملاك ظهور الملاك نعم. لإنسان كان بيبقى مصاحب بعلامات أهم علامة تصاحب ظهور أي ملاك على طول التاريخ المقدس سواء في العهد القديم أو العهد الجديد أن يعطي سلاما نعم. نأخذ مشهد مثلا ظهر على العزراء مريم قال لها سلام لك أيتها الممتلئة نعمة أيمين. الرب معك أيمين. ظهور يعطي سلام يعطي نعم. راحة يعطي طمأنينة لكن ظهور الملاك جبريل ده هو اللي اسمه جبريل لمحمد كان مصحوبا بشيء غريب جدا كان بيخنوه كما راينا في القصه كما راينا في القصه اذا لابد ان يشك جوكينج. انه جن نعم وتابعه آه كما كنت تقول جناب القمص آه كنت تقول بان علامات ظهور آه آه الملاك هي السلام ما حصل لمحمد لم يكن ابدا من اعراض السلام رعب نعم خنقه كما Terror. قالت القصه ثلاث مرات <تصفيق> يقول له اقرا <تصفيق> يقول ما انا بقارئ <تصفيق> يخنقه <تصفيق> طيب يبقى ده ملاك ازاي جاي يخنق؟ الملائكه تاتي ملائكه رحمه احنا بنشبه الملائكه بملائكه الرحمه <تصفيق> ملائكه تاتي لتعطي حياه لا ان تخنق البشر ومن هنا كان شك محمد مش ممكن يكون ده ملاك ولا انه ملاك لكن كان شك انه محمد بيليف ان هو ايجن قال لها قال لها رايت تابعا نعم او مسني جن نعم Did you catch it guys محمد said to خديجه right I was touched by a jinn that was what he said immediately I mean guys if you are there and something comes to strangle you you will understand this is this comfort is this creature comforting him or is this creature attacking him so Muhammad when he went to Khadija he said I am touched by a jinn and he did not give him salam which means peace Muhammad was not greeted he was not being getting salam from this creature that was squeezing him an angel every time an angel came like as brother Zakaria Butra said, when an angel comes, like the example for Mary, he said, Salamu alayki ya Maryam. Peace be upon you, said the true angel. Right? Squeezing, strangling, call it what you have to do. Call it. It's choking. It was, you know, even Muhammad said, I could not bear it anymore. Can you imagine? Muhammad could not breathe anymore. Right? That's all Shukra Janab al Right? So, should you actually leave Islam, guys? Think about this. It's your choice, Muslims. Think about it. Should you stay a Muslim? While your Prophet said, I feel that a jinn, a demon squeezed me, choked me. It wasn't an angel. Right? So that's in a nutshell, guys, for people maybe who are new to apologetics or maybe new to Islam. Maybe they don't know the back story, how actually the so-called prophethood, right, between brackets, the prophethood of Muhammad started in that very cave, Hira, 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 always with an echo, right? I mean, it's, it's a cave, Hira, Hira. Let me squeeze you. Iqra, iqra. Read. No, I cannot read. Ma ana bi qari, qari. I don't know how to read. Read. I cannot read. Read, read. Ah, okay. Sorry, guys. You know. <laughs> so let us let us continue from here. 
So <clears throat> here's a hadith, guys, from sunnah.com. Hadith from sunnah.com from Sahih al-Bukhari. Hadith number 3392. Let me give you the link. You can bookmark it. You can save it for your own collection, right? Make always sure, guys, to make bookmarks. Save the work like we do. So we can use it in your debates with Muslims. Narrated Aisha. This is from the mouth of the mothers of the believers. The baby bride of Muhammad. The baby bride of Muhammad. The mother of the believers, Aisha. She reported. The Prophet. <clears throat> Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Returned to Khadija. So Muhammad returned to Khadija. After that incident. While his heart was beating rapidly. He was shocked, you know, in terror, in horror from what happened to him in that cave. And she took him, Khadija, his first wife, the richest woman in Mecca. She was the, basically the number one woman, the boss of her own husband, Muhammad. And she took him to her cousin, Waraka bin Nofal, who was a Christian convert. I'll give you a thousand dollar Muslims if you can show me the word Christian in the Arabic text here. I will give you a thousand dollar. Here's a challenge. A thousand dollar challenge Muslims. If you can show me the word Christian, the word Christian, I will give you a thousand dollar. It's not there. This is a false translation. What else is new, right? What, is, what else is new when Muslims translate Arabic text? They have to lie. It says Nasrani, right? He became Nasara, Nasrani. There's nothing called Christian because Masihi is the right word for being a Christian. Ana Masihi. Do you hear the difference? Nasrani Masihi. Nasrani Masihi. Anyway, forget about it, guys. What else is new? Deception 101. Ana Masihi. Ana Mish Nasrani, ya Muslimin. I'm not a Nasrani. I'm a Masihi. Ana Masihi ibn Masihi. I'm a Christian, son of a Christian. I'm not a Nasrani. Anyway, so this Waraq ibn Nufil was a heretic, heretic, fake, wannabe Christian. And he converted to a fake, heretical sect that Muhammad later expelled from the Hijaz, right? From the Arabic Peninsula. And this Waraq ibn Nufil, the cousin of Khadija, right? The family of Khadija, was reading the gospel. Question. If you paid attention to our spanking of Adnan Rashid, you have seen videos from David Wood, you have seen videos from Christian Prince, and you have seen videos of me spanking Adnan Rashid. Question to the audience, to, to the people who are watching. Don't Muslims claim that the gospel is lost and corrupted? Lost and also corrupted? Well, here you go. In the time of Muhammad, in the time of Khadija, in the time of Waraq ibn Nufil, Muhammad had access to the Gospels. Do you see it? So Waraq, the cousin of Muhammad, uh, the cousin of Khadija, the first wife of Muhammad, his boss, was reading the Gospels. Did you catch it? Guys, I hope you, are, you caught what we, what we just told you. Muslims always claim that the Gospel is corrupted. But here you see that Muhammad had access to the Gospels. The Gospels were between the hands of Muhammad and Waraqa, right? And Waraqa ibn Nufil was translating and reading and translating the Gospels into Arabic. So he was translating the Gospel from the Aramaic to Arabic, right? So Khadija, let me continue guys, I don't want to go too much off topic. Khadija took him to Waraq ibn Nufil. And then Waraq ibn Nufil asked Muhammad, Waraq started to ask Muhammad, what do you see? What do you see? When he told him about the story, what happened inside that cave, how Jibreel was squeezing him like a grape, Waraka then re answered. Now look the response of Waraka, guys. This is very important. All right, guys. This is very important. Watch. Waraka says that is the same angel 
whom Allah sent to the Prophet Moses. Wait, 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 guys. Wait, wait, wait. Here is the disaster. Why, Rob Christian? What disaster are you talking about, Rob Christian? Guys, pay attention, please. P pay attention. The word angel here that you see here, it's not in the Arabic. Uh oh. Again, Rob? Rob, again they are using taqiyya in the translation? Yes. Because again, I will give you $5,000, Muslims, I will give you a $5,000, an amount of huge money, $5,000, if you can show me the word angel here in the Arabic. Do we have any Muslim who can read Arabic? Any Muslim in the live chat? If you know Arabic, show me the word angel in the Arabic. Taqiyya 101, exactly, Hlukana, Hlukana, exactly, Taqiyya in the translation. Deception, again, 101 in the translation. The Mecca of Allah, the deception of Allah being used, and here's the example. I will give you $5,000 if you can show me the word angel, as you see it here in the Arabic text. Anyone? Any Muslim? Ultimate Daddy, I will give you, I will give you a $5,000, a sum of $5,000 if you can show me the word angel here in the Arabic. It's not there. It's talking about Namus. What? What? What did you say, Rob Christian? Namus. The word in Arabic, angel, is Malak. Right? Malak. Guys, thank you for the super chat. Rob Kishi, I'm going to call you already did a video on this. Uh, Rory, I don't want to open Skype for now. Please, if you want to call me, you have to wait for a second. Thank you for the super chat, my friend. God bless you. Just wait. I want to finish this and we will try to take calls later. Okay? Wait. Let me finish my teaching. So the word angel is nowhere to be found here. The word is namus. Right? The word is namus, and this is the word. This is the right word. And namusu. So, waraka, guys, waraka, faqala, waraka. So, waraka said to Muhammad, hadha namus. This is the namus. This is the law. Guys, the namus is the law. So how did the angel become a law in the translation? How did the angel become a law? Yeah, namus in Arabic means law. Guys, the law, what 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 kind of law? If you continue reading, it says, هَذَا النَّامُوسُ الَّذِي The one that Allah sent, أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَى مُوسَى Musa is Moses. So what is being said here? This is the same law, right? This is the same law. There's nothing called angel in Arabic. That is the same law whom Allah sent to the Prophet Moses. What kind of law? The Mosaic 613 laws. So do you see the Taqiyya 101 guys? So here, the Mosaic law, which are the 613 set of rules, right? So how did... The angel become a law. <laughs> Squeezed by law, exactly. Do you see guys? Do you see the deception? Do you see the deception? So when you, whenever you debate a Muslim, please remind yourself what I'm being saying here, what I'm being teaching you here. This is taqiyya 101. There's nothing called angel. There's nothing called malak. It's the namus. This is the word. You can take a screenshot. This is the word. It's law. Namus. El Namus. Take a screenshot, guys. So show them this line. And Waraka said, this is the Namus that was sent on Moses. Faqala Waraka. هَذَا النَّامُوسَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَى مُوسَى Do you hear it? نَامُوس النَّامُوسُ Right? النَّامُوس 
So Waraka, in other words, guys, Waraka did not say this is an angel. And how does, ask yourself this question, how would Waraka ibn Nufal, an heretical, fake, wannabe Christian, right, know that this is an angel? Did he see him? No. Did he actually say this is an angel? No. It's, he says this is the same law that was being sent down on you that Moses received. Did Moses, guys, questions to the audience. I hope you're listening. Did Moses receive an angel or did God talk to, directly face to face to, to Moses? Did God, option A, did God talk directly face to face to Moses or did he send him in a so-called angel? Which one? The real story of Moses. Did God talk directly to Moses face to face or did God send Moses the biblical Moses an angel directly someone is saying directly face to face do you see the problem do you see the problem do you see the contradiction I hope you are taking notes guys this is very important to bust the lies of Islam so God of the Holy Bible talked directly face to face to Moses. There is no, no one in between, right? There is no angel in between. But here, Muslims claim that this is an angel. Well, nowhere, and you saw the video, nowhere is an angel being mentioned by Waraka. Waraka is saying this is the same law that was sent to, to Prophet Moses. There is no angel, there is no nothing. Right, and there's no squeezing for Moses too. Mo you know, Muslims love to to compare Muhammad to Moses. How do how dare you to compare the story of Muhammad, who is being squeezed by a demon in Cave Hira, to Moses, to the story of Moses? No, um, devil chaser, devil chaser. You're wrong, my friend. Waraka is not not doing taqiyya. Waraka is saying. He's not confirming there is an angel. He's saying Namus. Namus. Right? Law of Moses. Right? Of course, Waraka is not a real Christian, right? He's a heretical Christian. A fake Christian. Right? Right? Any Muslim who wants to show us the word angel here? Anyone? Yeah, Waraka was not a Christian, guys. Don't make that mistake. So here, not, not so, it's not a bad translation, Peter. It's lying translator. It's lying. The Arabic does not say angel. So here, we put a rot cross on the word angel. It's not there in their original Arabic, right? So Muslims are doing taqiyya. Let me give you the link. Save it. And when you are going to make a screenshot, put a red cross here and change it to the mosaic law, all right? Change it, put a red cross on the word angel because the Arabic is saying law of Moses. All right, did you catch it? Namus, namus, that's the original word, the law. Waraka, Berkat, I'm not sure if you just joined, but Waraka was a heretical Nasrani. He was a Nasrani. Nasrani. When someone asks a Arabic speaking Christians like me, what are you? I would say, Anna, I, Anna, Masihi. Now try to compare the word Masihi with Nasrani. Is, that, is it the same word? No. Anna, Masihi. I'm a Christian. Masih, Masihi. Do you hear it? Masih, Christ. Masih, Christ. Masihi, follower of Christ. I hope you are learning, guys. Thank you, Rory. My, God bless you, my friend. I appreciate what you're saying in the chat. Rob Christian, your teaching are good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless you. So, there's nothing called, you know, Christians don't call themselves Nasrani or Nas Nasrani, right? In the Middle East. We are calling ourselves Masihiyin. Ana Masihi ibn Masihi. I'm a Christian son of a Christian. 
Uh, persecuted uh, dot ct. Thank you for the super chat. Rob did waraka doing gospel translation into Arabic. Yes, that's what it said, right? Waraka, the fake wannabe Christian, the Nasrani, was translating the gospels from Aramaic into Arabic. Do you see it? He used to read the gospel in Aramaic and translate them. And let me show you and prove to you that that's true. Right? Let me show you from a different hadith. If we scroll down, this is another hadith. Let me give you this, the link to this hadith too. And I'm going to prove to you that Waraka was translating for Muhammad. And Muhammad was plagiarizing, stealing from the gospel. Alright, let me scroll down. Let me see here. This guy, look at his name, his name, full name. Waraka bin Nawfal bin As'ad bin Abdul Uzza. Uh oh. Who? The son of the slave of Al Uzza. Does it ring a bell? People in the live chat, I hope you're paying attention. The name, the full name of uh, Waraka bin Nawfal, the family name, bin Abdul Uzza bin Qusay. Uh oh. Abdul Uzza, anyone has an idea what Abdul Uzza mean? Pinpoint, you hit the jackpot. Uzza, Manat and Allah. Yes, the three daughters of Allah. Uh -uh. So how did a son of a mushrik who is worshipping idols, right? The three daughters of Allah. How did he become a Christian? A Nasrani. He's not a Masihi. Al Uzza, the servant, the slave of Al Uzza. Yes, exactly. Bam. So let me prove to you that he was translating. So Waraka, right? Waraka was the son of the paternal uncle, i.e., his father's brother from Khadija, who during the pre Islamic period became a Christian. There's nothing called Christian, it's Nasrani, lying. Lying again in the translation, I used to write the Arabic writing, I used to write of the Gospels in Arabic as much as Allah wished him to write. Question, well, how dare you Muslims, Muslims, how dare you to say, how dare you to say that the Gospel is corrupted while Muhammad and Waraka were using the Gospels. Did you catch it? So Waraka was translating the gospel right john mark luke etc right he was translating it for muhammad from aramaic to arabic bam did you catch it so what akabino for used to know aramaic so now you have an idea how muhammad could use biblical verses Use it, steal it, plagiarize it, and put it in Quran. Did you catch it? Did you catch it, guys? So the Bible is corrupted according to who? Exactly, Amelia. How? Not according to Muhammad. Muhammad and Waraka bin Nufil had have access to the uncorrupted gospels. They right? The gospel is uncorrupted, and between. The hands of Waraka and Muhammad. Do you see it? It's in front of you. This is not my uh, hadith. This is the Muslim hadith, right? Do you see it? This is Sahih al Bukhari. Let me show you. Sahih al Bukhari, hadith number 6982. I gave you the link. Let me give you the link again. So Muslims cannot say, Rob Christian, you're lying. I challenge you to go check this hadith, Muslims, if you think we are lying. It's your hadith, not ours. Did you catch it? Uh-uh. Uh-huh, Rob Christian. We finally understand. See, and here, to prove it, guys, here this, here in this hadith, they forgot to use taqiyya. Guys, look, 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 guys. Look, Waraka said, this is the same Namus. Did you catch it? The law of Moses. 
Filthy liars! Did you see how they were lying in the last one? Waraka said, that's the same angel. That's not what Waraka said. Waraka said, this is the Namus. You see? Waraka said, this is the same Namus. And they have to do taqiyya. Everything you see between brackets like this, right? Brackets. It's not in the Arabic. So they are adding here. Do you see it? They have to use taqiyya again. So here they forgot to use taqiyya. Here between brackets, adding what the Arabic does not say. Every time you see brackets, it's not there. They are adding. Wow! Liars! So it's namus. They don't even know what namus is, guys. Muslims have no idea what Waraka meant to say by Namus. Muslims, when we ask them what is Namus, they don't know. They don't know. They have no clue what Namus is. It's law, the Mosaic law, the 613 laws. That's what Namus is. That was given to the Jews and the Jews alone, right? I hope if, if people don't know what the Mosaic Law is, you need to go understand what Mosaic Law is. It was only for the Jews and only for the Jews alone, right? In the time of the Jews, in the Old Testament, right? Jews had to follow these set of rules. You don't follow them, you got punished. It was basically a rules punishment system, right? You don't follow this rule, you get punished. You don't follow it, you get punished. That's that's how it how, that's how it worked. So how did the the 613 laws that was sent down to the Israelites and only to the Israelites, how did it how this this set of rules be set down to Muhammad? That doesn't make sense. Guys, are you understanding what I'm saying? How did the 613 laws that were only for the Israelites how would they again send to Muhammad? Do you see the problem? Do you see the disaster that Muhammad created? Do you see the dilemma that Muhammad created for the Muslims? Are you following guys? Did you catch it? If you did not catch it, please give me a sign and I will explain again. I hope you are catching what I'm saying. Please let me know. Don't be ashamed guys. It's okay. Did you catch it? Did you catch it so we can continue? People, did you catch it? We didn't start a long time ago, only 38 minutes ago, all right? Roy, so you're not very late. Thank you for the super chat, my friend, again. Please explain again. Okay, no problem, guys. Guys, the Arabic says Namus. This is the Namus, right? We showed you. Let me go to the Arabic. For the people who just joined. Faqala. Faqala. Waraka. And Waraka. The cousin of, Muhammad, uh, of Khadija said. Faqala Waraka. Waraka said. Hada, this is. Al Namusu. This is the Namus. This is the law. The Mosaic law. That was sent down by Allah. On Musa. On Moses. Did you catch it? No, no angel, nothing. This is talking about the Namus. The set of rules. The Namus, the Mosaic law. That's what the Arabic says. Do you see it? Did you now catch it, guys? I hope, I hope you caught it. The Mosaic law, the 613 rules. Laws, right? That were sent down only to the, law, to the Israelites. Only to the Israelites and only to the Israelites. Under the old covenant, right? The covenant, the old covenant to the Israelites, right? When Jesus came, he fulfilled the old covenant and he brought the new promised covenant, right? That was promised in Jeremiah. If I'm not mistaken, it's in Jeremiah, right guys? Confirm please. The new covenant is promised in the book of Jeremiah, right? I hope I'm not mistaken. I hope I'm not telling you a lie. It's in the book of Jeremiah, right? Okay, thank, thank you for confirming. Thank you. No, 613, not 630. 613. Laws. Right? 
Did you catch it? Yeah, Moses, guys, Moses received the Ten Commandments, not only the Ten Commandments, but also 613 laws. So Moses received the Ten Commandments, right? Don't confuse them, guys. Plus 613 laws that every Israelite, every Jew had to follow. Guys, take notes, please, for the love of God. Help me to help you. Moses received Ten Commandments on the tablets. God himself wrote the Ten Commandments with his own finger. But he, Moses was also given a set of rules, 613 to be specific. And that's what Namus is all about. The 613 laws. This is not talking about the Ten Commandments, alright? Did you catch it? Did you catch it, guys? So, not the Ten Commandments, the Namus are the laws for the Israelites and the Israelites alone. Good, good. So, finally everybody caught it. Perfect, perfect. So here, nowhere, nowhere, we can conclude that nowhere, Waraka is saying that this is talking about an angel, or let alone the angel Gabriel. So Muhammad, guys, as we explained earlier, Muhammad did not ever say this is a angel. This is a demon and you saw the video, right guys? I played the video for you. Let me give you the link to the video too. Right? Just a second for the people who just came. This is the link to the video. And actually let me play that part for the people who just joined. It's very small video. Let me, you know what? Let me play the video again. Very short video, right? Uh, Translation is on the screen, guys. Muhammad never thought. Did you catch it? Muhammad never thought that he that what he met was an angel. Did you catch it? Muhammad never said it was an angel who appeared to me and squeezed me. Muhammad, when he went to Khadija, he said, "Cover me, cover me." I feel that a demon touched me. What did he say? He always believed that it was a demon, a jinn, and that it was his, Muhammad's follower. Do you see it? Muhammad never said that it was an angel that appeared to me. Did you catch it? A demon. Muhammad said to Khadija, it's a demon. Wow. A demon. Yes, let me, let me go back again. Guys, Focus. Guys, focus. Uh, this is what the early biography of Muhammad's life said by Ibn Hisham ibn Ishaq. Touched by jinn. The Sira books never mention that Muhammad, he saw an angel there. Did you catch it? This is the most early books. It's even older than the Quran itself. Right? The biography of Muhammad, Sira Nabawi, is even older than the Quran. Did you catch it? Let me give you the link to this video, guys. All right. Bookmark it, save it. I just gave it to you. You see how important today's live show is, guys? For the love of God, if you just came in late, you have to rewatch it. Download, translate our videos. This is really important. And this is too damaging, guys. This is too damaging. Right? Please help me to help you. Don't let our teaching go in vain. I love you guys. I'm not doing this for myself. I am teaching you how to expose Muhammad and Khadija and Islam. Because we now finally can conclude. We can conclude that 
that creature that appeared to Muhammad in cave Hira, right? Cave Hira was nothing but a demon. And Muhammad himself said, it was a demon who touched me. La masani jinn. La masani jinn. A demon, a jinn touched me. That's what Muhammad said to Khadija. Did you catch it? Muhammad never said from his own mouth, it was an angel. That's the, these are the baby steps of Islam, guys. Here Islam started. So from the very first moment, Muhammad believed that the demon touched him. Bam! Do you see how devastating? We are decimating Islam here, guys. We are destroying Islam and exposing it. You see how important this is? I hope you caught it, guys. I hope you caught it. Let me, let me continue, guys. Let us continue, okay? So to explain it further, guys, to explain it further for you. The early biography, the Sira Nabawiya, right? The early biography, Sira Nabawiya, about the life of Muhammad. Look what Khadija was saying. I copied the text from the Sira, right? Let me read it. Maybe it's small, but I'll, I'll read it, what it says. Muhammad lapsed into perfect sleep while Khadija's eyes, full of compassion and hope, were pinned on him. She withdrew from his room and pensive and restless as what he what she just had what she had just heard. So Muhammad told her about what happened to him in Cave Hira, right? How the creature was squeezing him, choking him. She looked, so Khadija, guys, watch. Pay attention. Khadija looked to the morrow hoping, hoping that her husband would become the prophet. So it was the wish of Khadija that Muhammad would become a prophet. Ah, Khadija, it was Khadija's wish, not Muhammad's wish. It was Khadija's wish that Muhammad would become a prophet, the first prophet of the Arab nation, right? She wished her husband could bring his people to the religion of truth. How she, how did, guys, one million dollar question, the one million dollar question, how did Khadija know that there is something called the religion of truth? Guys, is Khadija a prophet? Question, how does Khadija know that there's something called Islam and it's the religion of truth? Is she receiving divine revelation together with her husband too? Do you see how Khadija created Islam. She is, guys, you need to understand, she is the richest woman. She is the number one woman in Mecca, right? She is filthy rich. And she is being very ambitious. Exactly, Billy. Billy Mendele, you hit the jackpot, my friend. Billy is saying, Khadija is ambitious. She has career plans for her husband. Bam! Bam! Emilia, thank you for the super chat. God bless you. So, Khadija hoped that her husband would become the prophet of the Arab nation to unite the Arab nation under one religion. So, basically, in a nutshell, Khadija was really, um, you know, she was envying, right? She was envying. She was jealous of the Jews and the Christians, right? She was jealous of the Jews and the Christians who had prophets from the holy living God, Jehovah. She was jealous and she hoped that her nation, because she is the number one, right? She is the boss of Mecca. She is filthy rich. No one is rich as her. She has career plans for her husband, right? So she wished that the Arab nation would receive a prophet too. And to unite the Arabs, because you need to understand, guys, the Arab world right they were separated the arab world used to worship many idols inside the kaaba many kaabas right many kaabas not one not two kaabas all, all over the place with 360 idols all right thank you uh, rory for your super chat too rob christian i want to share a video it's related to the topic Okay, send me, my friend, send me to Skype and I will, I will look into it, okay? 
Send me f uh, the, f the link through Skype, please. So the plan of Khadija started, guys. So the plan of Khadija started. Khadija would set things in motion and included her cousin Waraka ibn Nofal, as we heard, as we read, into the mix, into the mix. Wicked, wicked, right? Wicked, wicked. Let me add Waraka to complete my plans, Khadija is thinking, right? So she brought Muhammad to her Waraka cousin, Waraka ibn Nofal, to set up a major plan. It is the major plan of Khadija herself. She hoped that her husband would become a prophet. Guys, are you understanding what is going on here? Yes, at least 26 Kaabas, at least oh, spread all over, right? All over the Arab world. In Jordan, in Petra, all over, man. Not just one. So are you catching what is happening here? Do you see that it was a plan from the start to create Islam? It has always been Khadija and Khadija her plan to make Muhammad the prophet of Islam. And it was her plan to create Islam. Wow! I hope you are learning something new guys. I hope you are benefiting from today's teaching. We have 203 people watching. That's a huge number. I'm really, I really appreciate it guys that a huge number are watching. Thank you, God bless you. Without you guys, we cannot do this. Yes, guys, you don't need me. To be honest with you, I'm trying to be honest here. You don't need Rob Christian, but, but if it's God's plan to use my knowledge and Arabic language to teach you, to expose this disgusting man-made cult created by Khadija herself and Waraka, right? It is, if it's the plan of our holy God to expose Islam and the fake prophet of Islam, then so be it. I am replaceable, you don't need me. You only need Jesus, guys. I, I myself need Jesus, right? But if I can help, so be it. Uh, someone is asking, Christopher is asking, Rob Christian, is there a difference between a demon and a jinn? Yes. A jinn in Islam, guys, there's a huge difference. The biblical demons, right? Biblical demon is a fallen angel, right? An angel who is going against God. There is no, nothing called demon in Islam, right? There are no demons in Islam because in Islam you have nothing called fallen angels. There are no fallen angels angels in Islam. There's nothing called like that. But you have something called jinns, right, in Islam, jinns. Even before Islam there was something called jinns, right? So the Arabs before Islam used to believe that there were creatures called jinns and those jinns could even have sex with women. Jinns can have sex with women. I was watching a, uh, a, a live show, guys, an Arabic Muslim live show on TV. A woman called in and she says, I feel when I'm asleep, a creature, a jinn is having sex with me. That's what she was saying to the Imam. Can you imagine? And another guy also called uh, one of the Imams live on TV saying, I think that a jinn is effing my wife at night because she is... <clears throat> She is horny when, when she sleeps, she makes all the strange noises. Yeah, jinn can have sex in, with, with, in Islam with women, yes. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Go, go study it. Just type it in Google or, or YouTube, you'll find tons of videos and articles. Jinn in Islam can have sex with women, yes. Only in Islam, guys. <laughs> Lord of mercy. Um, so guys, guys, in a nutshell, Khadija is the one who created Islam. No one else. Uh, Rory wants me to play a video. Okay, let me... Uh, Rory, is it a long video? Because, you know, we have a short time period. But let me open Skype. Uh, let's see if I... I hope it's not long, Rory. 
I hope it's on topic. Is it on topic, my friend? Is it on topic? I hope it's not long, okay? Tell me if it's long. If it's too long, I'm not going to play it. Rory, thank you for the super chat, my friend. <clears throat> I hope it's not too long. Let's see what video you're talking about. Let's see. Guys, subscribe, smash that like button if you want to support us through Patreon and you're liking our teaching, you're benefiting from it. Help me to help you. Subscribe, smash that like button. Help a brother out. Help me to help you. So let me play your video. Uh, see how. Let's see if it's any, any good. Hi, this is this is our brother is, Rory. Uh, okay. of it's not very the long. day. We're on week two. Okay, Rory. And it, today is Wednesday. I know I said I was going to only do it on the, um, Saturdays, Tuesdays, and Fridays, but. Uh, Yesterday I made an exception for my exercise, so I'm going to read it out to you today. It comes from Sunan Abi Dawood. Mm -hmm. Narrated Jabir ibn Book Abdullah. 43, General Behavior, Kitab al- Kitab al Adab. Ad Abba. Al Adab. Al Adab. Right. Chapter 116 mm -hmm. Regarding Roosters and Animals Okay Narrated Jabir, Jabir, Jabir ibn, ibn Abdullah. Abdullah. Abdullah yeah. The Prophet said mm -hmm. When you hear barking of, a, of dogs and burying of asses at night Seek refuge in Allah, for they see which you do not see. That's, that's true. very telling of <laughs> In Islam, yeah, that's true. Why can he pick this up when the so-called angel Gabriel um, came to him? Because he didn't come because of the dog. I don't think that was the angel Gabriel. <laughs> no, for sure not. It's like what Mom It's a demon. Here. I mean, right? It's a demon. When you hear Jibril is a demon. Barking exactly. of dogs. Seek refuge in Allah. For they see which you do not see. Very telling. I exactly, don't Rory. The angel Gabriel. You're correct, uh, brother. Uh... Rory, it's not the angel Gabriel, it's a demon, right? It's a demon. And not only that, there are hadith that is talking about when uh, you, an angel comes, uh, you will hear the sounds of bells, right? Ding, 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 right? Bells, ding, 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 when an angel comes. But we have other hadith where it says that when Satan comes, you will also hear the sounds of bells. Ding, 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 ding. So uh, Muslims, is it an angel or a demon? Allahu alam. Allah knows best. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, it must be an angel. No, no, no. I think it was a Satan. Right? And also, as you said, yes, dogs. Dogs and asses. Donkeys, right? Thank you for the video, uh, brother Rory. And thank you for the super chat. God bless you, my friend. So, as we just said, as we just said, <clears throat> it's Khadija. Khadija it's, is the one behind Islam, right? Khadija is the one behind Islam, no one else, right? No one else. It's Khadija, it's always been Khadija. She has the influence, she has the power, she has the money, she is the richest woman, she is filthy rich, so she can set up plans to make Muhammad a prophet, to make him a prophet. What did you say, Rob Christian? To make him a prophet? Yes, Khadija made Muhammad prophet by the help of Waraka ibn Nufal, as you see. Guys, 
Did you catch it? I hope you caught it. There is nothing called prophet in Islam. It's a self-proclaimed prophet by the help of his wife Khadija and Waraq ibn Uvul, her cousin. It's a plan in motion from the very start. Yes, and it's Jibreel according to Khadija, not according to Waraka. Waraka never said this is an angel. Waraka said this is the law that was sent down on Moses. The 613 Mosaic laws. Waraka never said this is an angel. That's number one. It's always been Khadija behind everything. Khadija is the problem and no one else. Khadija, she put these plans in the mind of Muhammad. She influenced Muhammad to become a prophet. Uh, I understand Rory. You, 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 it was a good video bro. Keep, keep up the work. Keep up the good work Rory. You're doing great. Continue. You made a beautiful point right there about dogs and donkeys when they hear the sound of, you know, so-called, so-called creatures. What made Khadija rich? Uh, Karin, Karin. Her daddy, her, her dad was the number one guy, right? The story goes like this. Let me even explain to you how Islam, before Islam, how it all started, guys. I hope you're, you're paying attention. According to the seerah, uh, Khadija, right? She was married many times before she got married to Muhammad. Not once, not twice, many times, right? So Khadija had even children. Even Fatima, the so-called daughter of Muhammad, is not his real daughter. It was the daughter of Khadija from a previous marriage. Did you catch it? Khadija, she is rich, she is old, right? Khadija is old and rich. Khadija is old and rich. Her husband's died, right? And she wants to marry again. Muhammad was working under Khadija as a merchant for Khadija, his boss and her father, right? Khadija fell in love with Muhammad. He was young. She was old, right? She's a MILF. <laughs> She's a MILF, an old MILF, a cougar, and she falls in love with the young Muhammad. Right? So she fell in love with him. She wanted to marry him. So when she went to her father, now guys, let me show you how Islam started with the deception. Deception robbed Christian? Yes. Waraka went to her father to see her father. She said to her father, Dad, I want to marry this younger man by the name of Muhammad. What did her father say as a response? Her father said, he is an orphan. Muhammad was an orphan. He had no father or mother anymore. His parents were dead. He was very poor. And imagine guys, the number one guy, the number one of Mecca, right? The number one guy of Mecca, the richest guy, the filthy rich guy, he of course is going to reject this marriage, right? So her father rejected the marriage between Khadija, his daughter and Muhammad. Ah, now you're understanding the, what happened from the very start, guys. So what did Khadija do? Khadija, yes, boxer, rebellion, that's what I'm saying. Is it true that Khadija's father not agree with the marriage? Yes, a big yes. Her father said, no, I don't agree on this. He didn't want to give her his daughter to Muhammad. Wow. He said, this guy is poor. He is an orphan. What 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 do you what are you going to do with him? You are very rich. You are my daughter. I'm not going to give you to a poor guy. An orphan man. So what did Khadija do? Guys, look what Khadija did. Khadija did the following. What did she do, Rob Christian? Guys, pay attention. Khadija made her daddy drunk. What the, what did she do? She made her daddy drunk. She gave him a lot of alcohol. Khamar, brother. She gave him nabid. Khamar, right? Wine. And her daddy became... You know, he was wasted, right? 
The daddy of Khadija was wasted. <laughs> so she deceived her dad. She fed him drunk. Right? She made him drunk. The next morning when, <laughs> when her dad woke up with a major hangover. He found out that Khadija was married to Muhammad. You see how Islam became what started with a deception? Deception 101, guys. Khadija deceived her father. And of course, you know, they are married. They had sex while her father was asleep, completely wasted. The next morning, her father finds out she, they had sex. They were married. And, you know, the damage is already done. Lord have mercy. You see how Islam started? Muhammad and his wife, newly wedded wife, the newly wedded Muhammad, deceived the father, his own father-in-law. They, Muhammad and his new wife, right, deceived his own father-in-law. Imagine if you're going to do that to your, oh, law. Yeah, sorry. Typo. You see how Muhammad deceived? This is a prophet. This is going to be a prophet. Where is Allah for punishing this? Where is Allah for punishing Khadija and Muhammad? Allah, Allah, why are you? Where are you? And you're going to make Muhammad a prophet too after this disaster? After this deception 101? Guys, 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 do you see how Islam cre was created, guys? And not only that, Right, so this that's already step number one. Step number two, then Khadija, after being married, after she, they deceived her father, she st set things in motion and included waraka into the mix to create Islam. You see, you see the major plans between Khadija was ambitious, man. Khadija was ambitious. She wanted to make Muhammad the, the first prophet of the Arab nation. Yeah, um, and by the way, Muhammad did not dare, guys, pay attention. Muhammad did not dare to marry a second woman as long Khadija was alive. Do you really think Khadija would have allowed Muhammad to marry a second woman while she's alive? He, she would kick him between the balls and send him away. And so he will become poor again. She would kick him out from whole Mecca, man. You know, Lord knows what, what she would have done to him if we would bring a second wife in the mix. So the moment Khadija dies, Muhammad starts to marry women and have sex with many women left and right. Sex slaves, marry women, you know. even Muslim married women. He used to steal from their husbands. Do you see how Islam is created, guys? This is the very first steps of Islam. So it's when bananas. Uh, guys, refresh, okay? Refresh. Are we still there? Can you still hear me, guys? I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, rem refresh, guys. Refresh. You know, this is a live stream. Everything can happen, right? Refresh. I hope everybody uh, is back again. Are you, uh, guys, I'm, am I still be here? Is my sound still good? Okay, that was a small hiccup. What can we do? This is the internet. I think uh, a lot of people are on the internet because of the lockdown. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, conclusion. What have we learned from today's teaching, guys? What have we learned from today's teaching? Let us sum this up. Take notes, take a screenshot, guys. Help me to help you make a screenshot. Take a selfie. <laughs> you know, I like it when Christian princess. I'm going to make a selfie. <laughs> you know, guy, guys are funny, man. Christian prince, I have to give you that. You're funny, bro. Uh, so the conclusion, right? The conclusion. Khadija hoped that her husband would become a prophet. That was her wish. Right? Islam is created on deception. We just taught you that. She deceived her dad. Right? She deceived her dad. She made him drunk. Next morning, her dad finds out they are married. 
So Khadija, her ambitious plans were, Khadija, point number eight, hoped that her husband Muhammad would become a prophet of the Arab nation. Khadija, as the richest woman of Mecca, set things in motion to prepare the self-proclaimed prophethood of her husband Muhammad in Mecca. She was envying, she was jealous of the Jews and the Christians because the Jews and the Christians had their own prophets, right? She was jealous. She wanted a prophet for the Arab nation too, right? There was no prophet sent to the Arab nation, right? Only to the Israelites, to the Jews. So she was jealous of the Jews. She wanted to create a prophet and nobody else. Who is going to fit that position except Muhammad, her own husband, right? So she made Muhammad a prophet and she added waraka, point number C, yeah, C, she added waraka to her arsenal to convince the Quraysh who are the tribe, right? The number one tribe of Mecca that this Namus, as we explained to you, the law of Moses was the same law which was sent down on her husband Muhammad in cave Hira to squeeze Muhammad. So how dare you Muslims to say that there's something called an angel? It's a Namus, right? How can a set of laws, laws that are 613 to be specific, how they are going to become a shape, take on a physical shape, you tell me. Uh, Al-Masih is saying the age difference between Khadija, the first wife of Muhammad and Aisha, his last wife is six, 50, 65 years. Uh, could be correct. I don't know the exact number to be honest with you. I have to look it up myself too. I'm not going to remember all the numbers. But I know that Khadija was around 50, 40 years, right? She was around 40 years when she married to the young Muhammad, right? Uh, Natis, uh, you're asking for chapter 66, ayah 6? Sure, let me, let me look it up after this, okay? Let's see what the ayah will say. So, guys, the conclusion is, and the question, point number D. D, question, were the real prophets choked as Muhammad was squeezed, choked over and over by this so-called creature. So you can be the judge after the day's teaching guys. Was it a demon or an angel that came to Muhammad? Was it a demon? Would a, would a true angel squeeze anyone? Shouldn't an angel say, Salamu alayka ya Muhammad, peace be upon you? In, in, instead, the demon, we know it's a demon, and Muhammad said, it's a jinn, right? It's a jinn who touched me, falamasani jinn, right? That was his feeling, that's what he said to Khadija. Khadija said, no, no, it wasn't a, <clears throat> a demon, it wasn't a jinn. Let, let us call it demon, okay, for a second, guys, you know? To make it easier, more easy talk. So Khadija comforted Muhammad. And, and you know what, what Khadija did? Guys, let me give you a shock. Guys, are you interested in a shock? Do you have your popcorn? Do you have a drinking? You know what? You know what, guys? Small coffee break. I better manifest some coffee. I'll be ready. Hola, one bell dance. Buenos días. Buenos días. Disfrute un buen café. Gracias, señor. Adiós. Adiós. Ah. Yeah, Rudy. Yo, Carl. Hitting the clubs. Got a case of Red Bull. Gonna pull an all-nighter. You down? Yeah. Those guys. 
nice. Oh, that's Rooney, my new friend Lee. He's a male nurse. <laughs> we hit a couple of raves last night. It was totally off the hook. Yeah, you seem a little hyper. I had a couple of Red Bulls. You ever had a Red Bull? I never had a Red Bull before, but I had a Red Bull last night. I really like Red Bull. I got a new necklace. Glows in the dark. But you can't really see it right now. Unless you do this. That's really something. Doesn't Red Bull make you crash pretty hard? No, 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 no. I don't think so. No. Uh, no. Hey, after we chug, we should get a Red Bull. You can get a Red Bull, I get a Red Bull. We could share a Red Bull. Okay, that'd be Red really fun. That sounds Red Bull. Red I think Bull. I'd really. I'd Red really Bull. Red Bull. All right, guys, all right. I hope you got yourself something to drink. I was out of water too, so you know. <laughs> yeah, guys, we are, you know, I had some time to play with designs, you know, to make things, you know, more interesting. You know, so I played with Adobe After Effects, you know, and I changed, as you see, even the the banner that you see here under, right? I changed it, so, you know, to, to make things more, you know, look more interesting, more sexy. Keith, hey, hello, hey, hello. Yeah, exactly, Natus. So, uh, guys, let me give you a shock. When Muhammad went to Khadija, he, he asked her, he asked her, he asked his wife, his first wife Khadija, the richest woman, he said to her, cover me, cover me. Muhammad was shocked to death. Yeah, kahwa, I'm enjoying my kahwa, coffee, yeah. I'm enjoying the coffee, brother, thank you for asking. So Khadija said, you know what Khadija said? Let me give you the shock. Imagine yourself in the shoes of Muhammad, you are scared to death. You just got choked by a creature inside a cave. Iqra, Iqra, read, read, read. The creature is telling him. My enemy, Qari, Qari, I cannot read. My friend, read or I'm going to squeeze you again. Read, read. My enemy, Qari, Qari, Qari. I cannot read. Again, squeeze, squeeze. Bro, I cannot breathe anymore. Stop, man, you're killing me. So after this very interesting incident, Muhammad went to Khadija and he tells her, cover me, cover me. What does Khadija say to Muhammad? This. Brother, Muhammad, hop on my lap, brother. Imagine, picture yourself in the shoes of Muhammad. This is Muhammad, right? The woman of the house, and this is Khadija, the man of the house. You know, a switch, a perfect switch, right? So, what is Khadija asking Muhammad to do? She asked him to sit on her lap. So, when she asked him to sit on her lap, this is Muhammad, eh? guys, don't confuse Khadija with Muhammad. This is Muhammad, this is Khadija. So, Khadija says to Muhammad, come sit on my lap. Yeah, this is 18 plus, guys. So Khadija, you know, Muhammad is on her lap. She tells him, she asks him this question. Do you see the creature? Right? Do you see the, this creature now? Khadija is asking, right? Khadija is the one asking, right? Muhammad says, Momo says, yes. Look at the conversation, guys. Then Khadija, I mean, Drake, you know, Drake, Khadija. This is Nicki Minaj. Muhammad is Nicki Minaj. And Khadija is Drake, the man of the house, Khadija. So she tells him again, sit on my other lap. Khadija saying, sit on my other lap. Okay, so Muhammad start to give Khadija a lap dance. This is Muhammad. You know, focus, guys. Don't get confused. This is Muhammad. Look at this sexy prophet of Islam. Anyway, so this is Muhammad. Again, Khadija asked him, do you see the creature? So he, she, he switches from lap to lap, from right to left. True love story. She asked him, do you see the creature still? Muhammad says, yes. What creature? The demon. Muhammad still saying, yes, I see him. What does... Khadija do, she takes off her clothes, 
Now Khadija starts to strip for Muhammad. Muhammad is still, you know, giving her a lap dance. She, Khadija, the man of the house, starts to give him a striptease. And then she asks him, do you still see this creature? Muhammad says, no, I don't see him anymore. What does Khadija's response? Aha, so this creature cannot be a demon, as you said. Because you said, a demon touched me, a jinn touched me. This cannot be a, a demon because a demon would not be ashamed of me being naked. This is Khadija, right guys? Right, she took off her clothes. Imagine, put herself, yourself in her shoes. She takes off her clothes. She shows her boobies, right? <clears throat> and the creature goes away. And by the assumption of Khadija, I mean Drake, Khadija, Islam is created. Do you see guys, the conclusion? Islam is created on deceiving the, the daddy of Khadija, on the lap dance of Muhammad and the striptease of Khadija. That's how Islam was created. The assumption of all, I don't want to say the word, the assumption of Khadija. That's how Islam was created. And it was her plan, right? That, that's how Khadija comforted Muhammad by taking off her clothes and asking him to give her a lap dance guys you can be the judge I know go see if I'm lying to you go check out the sources and see if I'm lying to you this is what happened in the very early days of Islam well uh, first Galatians you tell me our brother here is asking Rob Christian, how did Khadija knew what, uh, what a demon would do? Well, you tell me. I mean, put yourself in her shoes. Be she thinks, right? Khadija thinks because this creature went away after she becomes naked. This cannot be. If it's an angel, the angel will be ashamed and he will leave, right? If it's a demon, the demon would stay and look at her boobies, right? In other words. If it was, it was not an angel, so a demon, the creature would have stayed and watched and enjoyed <coughs> the show, brother. I mean, they're going to have sex, man. I mean, she's taking her, her clothes off. He's giving her a lap dance. <clears throat> yeah, X-rated movie, brother. In the life of Muhammad. You know, everything is about the penis of Muhammad, man. Uh, guys, and by this we can conclude our today's live show. You can be the judge of today's live show, after today's live show. Was Jibreel a demon or was it an angel? What are the proof? What proof do Muslims have that they dare to say that it's Jibreel? As we showed to you, Waraqaba ne never said that it's an angel. He said it's the Namus, right? We explained it to you. Waraqa said this is the law of Moses. So how did the law became Jibreel? Try not to laugh, guys. Come on. This is true story, brother. Someone asked me for an ayah. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's see if we can fulfill. Chapter 66, right? That's what you asked, Mr. Natis. 66. I hope it uh, it's on topic, okay? Okay, it says, O you who believe, the Muslims, right? Save yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stones. Over it are angels, stern and strong. They do not disobey Allah in what he commands them. 
and do as they are commanded. What what are what what are you trying to say, Natus? Natus saying Quran chapter sixty six ayah six says yes. Why Allah save yourself from fire if Allah is the sayer? Yeah. Can you tell me right? And not only that. Here's another disaster. It says that the angels are commanded to do whatever Allah commands them, right? Let's see. I think this is the ayah that I'm trying to... Yeah. Guys, you know, it, it strikes me odd the following. This ayah, read it with me, guys. This is really a disaster. This is Allah talking, right? When we ask Muslims, who is Allah talk? Who is the one talking in the Quran? They say it's Allah. It's the speech of Allah. All right. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, ayah 34. And when we, Allah, suddenly Allah becomes a we, <clears throat> said to the angels, so Allah commanded the angels. What is this translation, man? Disgusting translation, man. Stop lying. Okay, this is maybe better. And when Allah, we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam, is judu, act of worship. So Allah is commanding the angels to commit shirk, an act of worship, to commit shirk and prostrate before Adam. Uh oh. So they prostrated. So the angels committed shirk in front of Allah, prostrating to Adam. Wow, except for Iblis, Satan. Iblis, Satan refused and was arrogant and became of the disbelievers. Question, what the heck? Question, why is Allah punishing? Why is Allah punishing Iblis who is supposedly a jinn, right? He is a jinn, mind you. He is a jinn. He's not an angel. Why is Allah Getting angry while Allah is saying to the angels, commit shirk, do sujood in front of Adam. And so, say, listen, so they listened, but Iblis did not listen. Wait, Iblis is a jinn. Ya Allah, you stupid Allah. Allah, you are so stupid, you don't understand. When you created Satan and when you created the angels, you don't know, understand that Satan is not an angel. So why are you getting angry with Satan and you are punishing him? Right? Why? In Islam, angels are created from Nur, right? Which they call light. Jinns in Islam are created from smokeless fire. So why are you... Allah, Allah. One million dollar question. Why are you angry with the Iblis, with Satan, while well, he's not an angel? He's a different kind of being. You are commanding the angels. You are not commanding Satan. So, of course he's going to refuse. You are not commanding him to do so. You see the disaster, you guys? Is this, is this an ayah from God or an, uh, a disaster, a lie, a, a, a stupid mistake from a man like Muhammad? Noor, Noor is uh, light, it's light, right? Do you see the disaster guys here? Yeah, so the real mushrikeen are the angels. Allah is asking for shirk and at the same time Allah is becoming angry with Satan while Satan is not doing anything wrong. The only not mushrik, the only good guy in the story is Satan. He doesn't want to commit shirk. And, and still Allah is angry? <laughs> Look at this disaster, man. Look at this disaster. Yeah, Allah is, is, you know, we know Allah is nobody else than Satan. Peter M is saying unjustified anger by the moon idol Allah. Exactly. Exactly. Guys, let's see if we can take uh, calls, all right? Are there any Muslims who think they have the courage and the knowledge to call us? Anyone? Any Muslim? Mayday, mayday. Do we have any Muslim in the chat who wants to call? My Skype is open. Do we have any Muslim guests? Brother? 
Five potatoes? Uh, I, I, give us one, man. Anyone? I mean, we have 226 people watching. That's a huge number, man. Guys, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining our live show. Thank you for your support. I cannot thank you enough, guys, because without you, we cannot do this. Right? Any Muslim who thinks he has the courage and the knowledge to call us? Anyone? Muslims are scared again. Why are you so scared? Muslims, if you think, Muslims, if you claim and think that Islam is the truth, why are you scared to call me? I'm not going to buy it if you don't ask. I'm not going to buy it if you don't ask me to buy it. Come on, man. Do I look scary? Me, you know, sometimes, guy, if I look in, in the mirror, you know, I get scared of myself. I mean, you know, especially in the dark. You don't want to see me in the dark, bro. But, I mean, come on. You think I'm going to buy it? Thank you for the, for the super chat, Amelia. Amelia is saying, Allah and Dajjal are twin brothers. The only difference are the eyes. Exactly. Exactly. Good point. Any Muslim? Mayday, mayday, mayday. Speaking from cave. Hira, hira. Always with the echo, guys, because Muslims cannot catch and focus without echo, right? Yalla, ya khwan, winkum. Where are you, ya khwan? Yalla, ya khwan. Yalla, ya habayib. Farjini ardak tafak ya Muslim, ya Muhammadan. Farjini ardak tafak. Yalla, yalla, yalla. Come on, come on. Yalla, ya kittens. Kittens of Allah. You know, we always say, they when we quit our live show, when we stop streaming, the Muslims become lies in the comment section. But when we are live on air, we are live streaming, they all become kittens. They all become meow. In the comment section, they are Rah. In the live show, they are meow. They are scared. Yeah, they are buzzy. They are busy feasting, yeah. Filling their stomach with food, with delicious food, calling it fasting. Yeah, right. Scumbags. Meow. Kitty, kitty, I have milk for you. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Where are you, kitty, 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 kitty? Abdul, ya yeah, Abdul. Where are you, ya yeah, Abdul? Come on. You need to defend your fake prophet, man. We are barbecuing your prophet today. The day is today. We are exposing your prophet, man. We are exposing filthy Khadija who created Islam. Abdul, ya yeah, Abdul. No. Guys, let me... You know, since we don't have Muslims, maybe we can take a call from the Christians. Since Muslims are scared to death from us, if you are a Christian and you want to call, someone says, I love barbecue. You, you like ribs, man? You know, you should taste my ribs, bro. The ribs that I make, you're going to bite your own fingers, bro. Especially the, 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 the honey sauce and whatnot, you know, the, you know, the barbecue sauce, bro, I'm going to lick your fingers. You know, like the Muslims, they lick each other's fingers, right? Muhammad commanded the Muslims to lick each other's fingers because you never know where Allah hid the barakat, right? The blessing. Keep licking the fingers, brother. Hey, bro, bro, let me lick your finger, brother, because maybe on your finger there is a barakat, brother. Blessing from Allah, brother. This is the Sunnah of Muhammad, guys. This is the tradition, the teaching of Muhammad. What can we do? F fingering, licking good. I think the guy from KFC, that fat old guy, got the idea from Muhammad, brother. Finger looking good. Keep licking, brother. KFC, brother. Yeah, maybe, you know, yeah. I mean, if Muhammad can plagiarize from the Jews and the Christians, legend story, flying carpet, uh, uh, speaking ants, uh, uh, the gospel, unfishy gospel of Thomas, right? Uh, you know, everything is okay in Islam, bro. Finger licking good, yeah. The nice revelation of finger licking good. You know, Allah told me that, you know, <clears throat> there's a 
blessing hidden in the food, brother. So keep licking my fingers, brother. Don't bite. Any Christian who wants to call, guys? K Soka Films is laughing. Let me call, call our sister K. K, are you there? K, let me call your sister. Hey, what's up? Hello, how are you? Hey, hey, God bless you, sister. How are you? Guys, oh, maybe good. you watched our video yesterday. Uh, I had a nice collab, uh, you know, collaboration video with our dear sister here. Uh, subscribe to our live show. Uh, sorry, to our videos, to our YouTube channel. Dear sister Kai from Soka Films. How are you, sister? I'm good. I was, <laughs> I was laughing. I was just going to eat Why? my supper. Why? Why are you saying that Islam is funny? How dare you? Um, I am actually. If <laughs> if by funny we mean satanic, then um, yeah, you're funny. It's not. That's my like. I've read some pretty funny hadith, but uh, yeah, the finger licking it just put me off my whole supper. <laughs> Because I don't know where their hands yeah. have been first. Yeah. Like, I don't know whether they're relying on the camel urine I, to get rid of the illness. Yeah, Kay, Kay what, do, what do you think about the, you know, the story of, you know, the beautiful uh, love story between Khadija and her, uh, and her wife, Muhammad? I mean, Muhammad gave Khadija a <laughs> lap dance and she gave him a striptease. This is how I, Islam started. I mean, I think, look at yeah, Muhammad, I think, man. <laughs> I think that between Khadija and Warika, they actually created Islam. This is Muhammad. If, this is this is. But no, Warika. Mm -hmm. So if if Muhammad would have ran home and hidden under her skirts and mm -hmm. said, "Oh my gosh, this demon guy, he came. He like he he wanted to squeeze my uh, throat there." I think if she had have said for sure it's a demon, what are you talking oh, about? Man. You know, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, there would man. be no Islam. But yeah. because, uh, yeah, because Jibril is part yeah. of the. Uh, but guy, guy did you did you just caught? Did you after today's live show? Mm. Did you just caught how it was Khadija? It was all over Khadija. Khadija, it was her. It was mm -hmm. her plan to make her husband a prophet of the Arab nation. It was all For sure. about her. Yeah, well, she, she had the money and the prestige already. Exactly. But because she was only a woman, yeah. like she needs a, a man to, uh, like, I yeah, think. She can do it, right? Because purposes, yeah. we, don't, we don't have women, right? To, you know, um, the people will not accept her. Else she mm. would have called herself a prophet. So she took Muhammad. He was the perfect one for her perfect plan, right? Yes. To succeed. She has the money, as you said. She has the power as the richest woman in Mecca. She's the mm -hmm. number one. She has all the money. She has all the power. And she made Muhammad the prophet. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. So, it's, yeah, I guess I don't, I don't take away the guilt from him, though. I think that once he had the green light, once he realized that people were believing this uh, nonsense, then he must have had the time of his life. He must have been loving life, getting people to dip flies in the one wing and the other wing and the licking the fingers and the drinking camel urine and eating camel like yeah. feces. I think he just must have been hysterical with laughter mm -hmm. because I would be. Like if I had that, if I wasn't Christian, like if I had that sort of power and I could make all these people run around mm. just performing nonsense stuff and still tell them they're going to taste hellfire, still tell them that every Muslim's going to, you know, going to go into hell whether they come out or not. Like he's just, he's cheeky. That's yeah. what he is. <laughs> Guys, by the way, like I said, please help our uh, warriors out, right? I know you want to support uh, our work. I know you want to support Christian Prince. Christian Prince is a true legend, but there are many yeah. other warriors, right? Help our dear sister here out. Support her channel, subscribe. Her channel name is K Soko Films. And we have another dear sister by the name of Sonia Azam7. She has an amazing YouTube channel too. God bless her. God bless her work. Also, subscribe to her YouTube channel. And there are many people, right? We have Collisions117 too, who is doing an amazing job. Many, many warriors. So, support everybody, guys. Everybody who is a warrior, support them. We need, we need to destroy um, yes. all false arguments and lofty opinions that set themselves up against God. Yeah. So that takes Islam, uh, exactly. that takes care of that. And then we have to, we must repent and uh, turn our face to the Lord for sure. Yeah. And we can do it with YouTube <laughs> and we can do it with, uh, you yeah, know, like just... out in the street, in your home, wherever yeah. you are, you can tell someone about Christ. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. God bless you, sister. Uh, thank you. God bless you too, Rob. Thank you for yesterday's uh, 
work together, right? We, ha oh, we had no, an amazing, amazing video, a, almost one hour long video. We discussed many topics. Guys, if you're interested, go and rewatch my collab with Dear Sister K right here. And, uh, you know, support her work, support everybody who is doing our kind of we work. Just, just before you finish, we just had news in the last couple of hours that our prime minister is going to relax the restrictions. So even though I've been going to Speaker's Corner every week, right, right. there's been no Muslims there too afraid to come. But <laughs> now it's going to be relaxed. So even though Mohammed said there's no contagious disease exactly. and they're calling him a liar, they can come outside again <laughs> now. Exactly. So exactly. Well, sister, yeah. thank you for uh, right, for, for this. And uh, we will continue, right. uh, Lord willing, in another live show. Okay. Drink, drink a honey drink when you get off of this live stream. Yes, Your voice. Yes. <laughs> I, know, I know my voice is gone. I know. All right. Thank All you. Right. God bless you. Appreciate All right. Take it. care, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, guys. I think we had, uh, you know, enough to, enough laughs today. I hope that you benefited from today's information. Use it. All right. Don't be lazy, Christians. Please. I know, you know, there are many interesting to do uh, videos on YouTube, many hobbies, but you also need, right? You need, you need to do the holy work as a Christian. I'm not asking to everybody to teach. I'm not asking you to teach or do live shows, but you need to support guys. Without you, we cannot do this. All right. Without you, we cannot do this. All right. Support the warriors. God bless you. God bless your families. Let me take another call, guys. <clears throat> and uh, then we will wrap this up. Let me take this last call. Hello, Hi. you're live on air. Welcome. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Go ahead, I brother. YouTube. YouTube. Um, the reason um, I wanted to take a little of your time is that um, is there any verse by any chance in which um, Jibril uh, says I am Jibril like introducing nowhere him? nowhere in the Quran nowhere so they attribute this name to the angel or whatever Muhammad saw is it correct yes they you know they they are assuming because Waraka as we showed on the screen let me go to the ayah uh, sorry to the hadith Warak is saying right this is this is the namus right this is the law the namus yeah, that yeah. that Allah sent down on Musa right on Moses and the translation they are lying they're saying angel there's nothing called angel I give any Muslim thousands of dollars if you can show me the word angel in this do you sentence. want to I challenge you a little more. You see the taqiyya? You see the taqiyya, guys? There is nothing called angel. It's namus. And we showed you what namus is, right? Namus. You see it? Here, they forgot to use taqiyya. You see it? Namus in Arabic, when we Christians, when we read our Arabic translation of the Bible, we read namus as the law of Moses, the 613 Mosaic law. That's what namus in Arabic means, according to the Arabic speaking Christians who translated the Bible from Aramaic and so on, you know? Um, the other thing is just hit me last night and um, I wanted to call just to make sure I got it right. Yes. In the first verse, doesn't it, it says uh, in the name of the most merciful and so on. Yeah. And then Alhamdulillah. Bismillah rahman rahim yeah. Yeah, and yeah. verse two is Alhamdulillah. Yeah, all praise to Allah, yeah. Yeah, so Alhamdulillah, as far as I know, Allah um, is not Allah, so they changed the word. But the trouble I saw with the, it, it just hit me last night, to be honest. Yeah. It's like Allah, because he's the speaker, yeah. he's thanking to La for <laughs> what? Guys, did you just hear what, what this gentleman said? He made a huge point, a great <laughs> point. Allah is saying, guys, this is chapter one. Do you see it? Al-Fatiha, Ayah two. Allah is saying to himself, Right? When we ask Muslims, who is the Quran speech from? It's Allah talking. So Allah is saying, guys, for example, here's an example. I'm Allah, right? I'm the one speaking for this moment. Allah is saying, all praises to Allah. Wait, Allah, are you talking to yourself? All praises to Allah? 
Yeah, but the trouble is. Alhamdulillah, Rabbin Alameen. Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. I mean, Allah. Why are you talking to yourself? Allah is asking to be guided. Allah, yep. are you saying, Ehdina Sirat al Mustaqeen? My point is that Alhamdulillah, it's Lila, it's not Alhamdulillah. Yes, exactly. Li, guys, and their true name of Allah is Lah. Do you see it? Li, two, guys, this brother is very smart. Guys, this brother here that you're listening to is very smart. All praise, guys, Alhamd, all praise, Li, Li means two, Lah. Do you see the name of Allah? The real name of Allah is La. So, exactly. uh, what La. is Allah thanking for to La? Is because He uh, allows Him to be God, or uh, does La made Him a service? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, bro, it doesn't make sense. When we ask Muslims who is talking, they say it's Allah. So, is Allah asking to be guided to the straight path? Allah is saying, Oh Allah, please guide me to the straight path. It doesn't yeah, make it's sense. Like Islam, you know, Muslims, this proves to us that Muslims are brain dead. They recite the Quran five times a day, right? Five times they pray. And they I recite this, sh the, sorry, the Al-Fatiha. This is the most repeated Fatiha. Are they repeating what Allah is saying to himself? Allah is saying, please Allah guide me. And not, he's asking another Allah to guide him. Disaster, man. It's a disaster. I went uh, live on crucifixion um, last night uh, on the last four uh, part uh, dawa, yeah. and uh, it was very funny because they did their homework on Tacitus and stuff like that. You know, the yeah. mainstream say Christians, and I didn't mention them, and they wanted to keep dragging me to those. You know, so I was like, why do you keep mentioning? I mean, don't you have other sources? Like, you only. Uh, you know, beat the drum on uh, on these guys. W w why? Mm. So at the end of the conversation, I said, you know, I'm going to ask you one uh, question. I said uh, the same question that Peter asked the Sanhedrin. Mm. What should we listen to? Uh, uh, God or man? So Hamza was like, God, God, God. Mm -hmm. Then I was, what's the point of the stream? <laughs> <laughs> They got they they all were shocked for a couple of seconds and then they wanted to go back to you know to Josephus and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they they have no they uh, they have no idea what Christianity is all about. I'm exactly, telling you. Exactly. We have uh, my friend just a second. We have a melodies the sin of wrath. He's a Shia Muslim. Shia Abdul, Shia Abdul. Why are you such a foolish, blind Abdul? You don't know Arabic clearly. Why is it saying Alhamdu Li to La? La, your God's name is La, my friend. Why is it not saying Alhamdu Li Allah? It's saying Li La Li La. So stop calling Allah Allah. His name is La V La V La V La. That's his name. And I would uh, inc just to let, if you want, I'll let you go because probably you yeah, have. I mean, yeah, I really have to go. My voice bro, yeah. is gone. I want to say, you I know, wish, you know yeah. we should make more often uh, this kind of stuff and let Muslim come in uh, because um, it's the only way I think we can engage with them, mm. you know, to point them uh, s mm. some of the stuff and then. Bro, we, we already did that many times. I mean, I have tons of videos. We have challenged Muslims over and over, but they are too scared. Bro, they are too scared to call us because they know uh, what kind of barbecue I have for them reserved. I have all kind of tastes. I have ribs. I have falafel. I have everything for you. Yeah. Just uh, and Allah and knows best. Um, anything uh, we uh, don't yeah, know, yeah, Allah knows And we best. have great admins. They will even serve you cookies, milk, coffee, tea, whatever you like, man. We are live on air. Why are you so, so scared, right? Anyway, my friend, thank you for calling. I really have to go. My voice is completely gone. It's you okay. Know? Thank you for having thank me. For it's a pleasure yeah. always to speak to you. Thank you, and my friend. Best. Pleasure is all mine. God bless you. See you. Thanks for calling. Guys, I hope you benefited from today's live show. Right? We proved to everybody that this so-called Jibreel that was squeezing Muhammad inside that cave. Hero, hero, hero. 
is nothing but a demon. Demon, brother. Huh? Demon, yes. Because a true angel would have never attacked Muhammad. He would have never forgot to say, Assalamu alaikum. The angel never, right? I mean, Jibreel, the demon, never said, Assalamu alaikum, ya Muhammad. He started immediately to force him to do things, squeezing him like a grape. Right? This cannot be an angel, Muslims. You need to wake up. Muslims, drop Muhammad. Right? Drop him on the floor. Drop him. And come back home to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you for this lovely support. I want to stay with you for many hours, but you know. My voice is gone. Uh, we, have, we are live for 111 minutes now. I think, thanks to the Lord, it was an amazing live show again. Thank you, God. Our God is good. And I want to thank the Holy Spirit who is guiding us, who, is, who blessed today's live show. Download our videos. If you want to support us on Patreon, you can do so. This is the link for it. Help me to help you. Because of you, we can do this, guys. We can continue our work. Also, share and subscribe our channels everywhere. Download our videos, spread them around. I'm not asking you to teach, right? I'm not asking you to teach, but at least spread our videos. Spread our teaching all over the world. Don't be lazy, Christians. If you can help one soul out of this man-made death cult, sex cult called Islam, there is going to be a huge celebration in the heaven, in the kingdom of God. Thank you for watching, guys. God bless you. God bless your families. Lord willing, we will see each other in a future live show. God bless.